Uh, to dub, do some foreign dubbing for a Louis Mall film. Um, and if you've ever watched Louis Mall films, um, they just think you want to shoot yourself. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, out of that, they liked my voice and they yanked me out of the room and asked me to audition for something else. And it was this animated, weird little animated Japanese thing that I'd never seen anything like this before called The Secrets of the Fire Child. Um, it's a wonderful piece. It's just getting re-released in the original dub, so that's pretty cool. And uh, it's kind of a Romeo and Juliet story set under the water, kind of Disney-esque with a token no. symphony doing it. It's really beautiful. And, uh, and, that, uh, and that ended up on television. And out of the blue, I get a phone call from a guy, from a guy named Robert Barron, um, uh, who's no longer with us, unfortunately. But um, uh, they liked me, and they wanted me to come in and do a little paid audition. And that was really unusual. I mean, that is really unusual. And they had me dub a Japanese soap opera. <laughs> And out of that, uh, out of that, they cast me in, a, in, a, in this, they said, oh, it's a little thing, we'll just do it for episodes, it's not going to be a big deal, it's called Macross. <laughs> <laughs> and they said, don't Macross. worry about it, come in and do it. Well, meantime, I was like, I would had it up to here with acting, I moved out, I was moving out of town, out of LA, and going to work for a friend of mine at a radio station. And I get a phone call back, said, hurry, you got to come back, we're doing a series, and that became Mobile Town. And, um, and that's kind of what started my career, and I've been doing voice acting ever since. I've found a lot of success with that, where people are even voice acting that child is really upset. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That's just not wet laundry, that's pissed off. <laughs> Um, so, uh, and, uh, and I've spent the most of my career uh, in the voice side, uh, anime has been very, very good to me. Um, I did voice acting, I, been, I actually did leave town with the radio for a little while and advertising the commercials and, and actually sold airtime and did that sort of stuff. And, and came back as a story editor for Savant Entertainment for a little show called Noozles, which some of you may be old enough to remember when you were little I was on Nickelodeon. And uh, I, I got a staff job at Savant Entertainment, which eventually led me to uh, become the head writer and co-producer and development producer on my work Power Rangers. Yeah! Yeah! yeah. <laughs> it's weird. I'm an actor right now. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I, 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 uh, I, uh, I spent about 10 or 11 years there, did a lot of different things, produced specials, and, and I, I kind of got out of that game for a while, except to do uh, the, the network uh, the bumps. You know, Saban's Little Mermaid will be right back after this. I did a lot of those. <laughs> and, um, and when I left Saban, it was right when anime was really kind of exploding again in the late 90s and early 2000s, so I kind of jumped back into it, started voice acting again, and uh, did my first show back was Van Dredd, where I played the Beaky, and, um, yeah. Yeah. and then, uh, just have done a bunch of different things, like Reload and Ghost and Shell and Akira, and a bunch of different things, including Loop on the Third. Yeah! Yeah! You, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and, um, uh, uh, and, and, and direct a lot. I direct an awful lot. It's mostly what I do for a living now. Is I direct uh, video games. Uh, um, I can't remember the titles off the just this my Wow. And uh, and occasionally producing produced anime TV, the first season, you know, things like that. So that's what I do. And uh, and uh, so I got involved with adventures in voice acting uh, when they did the documentary. Um, right after they did the documentary, which I was in, I'm not a part of, I didn't really do anything, although I'm slated to produce volume two, we never get it started. <laughs> <laughs> We're about ready to go, but it, there's money and things like that are involved. Um, and uh, and uh, Bang Zoom Entertainment, who sponsors Adventures in Voice Acting, uh, asked me to start teaching classes, because they got a lot of response from that if people wanted to get into voice acting. So I started to teach, which in a minute. So I started to teach voice acting under the Adventures in Voice Acting thing, and that's kind of taken off. So I've been teaching voice acting around the country uh, in, in paid workshops and, and doing these little mini workshops and conventions for free, and it's been a wonderful thing. And uh, and so I want to just put a shout out to Bang Zoom, who kind of sponsors all this and gives me the materials to do it. And, uh, I will do a shameless plug. Uh, we've been traveling all over the country. I just did a workshop a couple months ago in New York. It was really successful. So we're going to be back in New York in the fall. Um, uh, we should be down in, uh, in Baltimore again. We've done that a couple of times. Um, um, going to Atlanta and Dallas a little bit later this year and Seattle. So uh, if you get on the, on the website and sign up.
and have an interested effort, if you hear me talk as you may go, oh, no, I don't want to do this, <laughs> um, then uh, sign up and I'll let you know. Yes, at www.adventuresinvoiceacting.com. <laughs> okay, the first thing they'll do is try to sell you the DVD for the documentary, but if you hit workshops, you'll get information. The DVD that I bought, I have the website too, right? Pardon? The DVD that I bought, Adventures Acting. That's the website I'm talking about, but the workshops are on there, and we're starting a series of webinars, which are a lot less expensive than the workshops. I just did my first one, I'm auditioning, and we're going to start doing them monthly. Webinars? That's where you sign up, you turn on your computer, and visuals come over the top. If you can count, you can count audio, you can do it through your computer, you can point the thing. And you can actually ask questions. It was cool. I had, I had people in my webinar, I had people from Australia, New Zealand, the UK, and all over the country. So that was really cool. Wow. Wow. Yes.